Hi, my name is Corey Hart. I'm an education specialist with Vermont Fish and Wildlife Department, and this is season four, episode one of the Scat and Tracks program. Once a week, you're going to join in via YouTube with your class and watch a pre-recorded video highlighting one of four species. This year, we're going to be highlighting the Virginia opossum, the eastern coyote, porcupine, and the short-tailed weasel, also known as an ermine. And you're going to be learning about the habitat of those critters, uh, their life cycle, and how to identify signs of them when we're out there in the woods. The chances of, of us going out with your class and actually seeing a coyote are pretty slim, but we can find sign or evidence that a coyote is uh, in the area where you're doing your nature walk. So after you've watched this short 10 to 15 minute video with your class, you're gonna go outside with your teacher and you're actually gonna go out and go on a short nature hike and you're just gonna look for those signs that we discussed. So the primary thing that we're gonna be focusing on is finding that correct habitat where that critter is going to live. And that's going to vary based on the critter that we're highlighting that week. Uh, this program only focuses on four species per year, but as this is our fourth season, uh, if your class is interested in learning more, the other 12 species can be found on our website at vtfishandwildlife.com to help extend your learning and focus in on those other species. At the start of every video, you're going to hear me mentioning a key phrase, habitat. Well, what is a habitat? A habitat is made up of four basic things, and we all need the same basic things to survive. Whether you're an opossum or a human, you still need the four, four main things. I might eat something way different than a possum does, but we still need those four basic things to survive. And what those four things are is everything needs to have some source of food. Uh, so for me, this morning, I stopped at a gas station on my way here and grabbed an egg sandwich. Uh, our opossum might have had a meal of insects or could have ate a, a dead animal that it found. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit. The other things they need is water. So access to some sort of water source. And you see right behind me, you can see this beautiful marsh behind me in the background. That would serve as an excellent area for them to get their water. So we have food, water. They also need some form of shelter. All of us live in, a, live in a house and have that as our form of shelter. Uh, opossums may live in dens, underneath or in old, old burrows, underneath logs. It really varies. But we all need some way to get out of the wind and, and be sheltered. Then our fourth thing is the arrangement or space and how it's all grouped together. Uh, so with some critters, they have a really large range where they can have their food, water, and shelter spread out over a really long area. Other animals need their food, water, and shelter really close together. And those are the four things that make up a habitat. As we start to focus on each particular species throughout this series, you'll be able to hone in on those things that make up the habitat or where they like to live when you go on your nature walk. And that's what you're gonna be looking for. So if you know a particular species likes to live in a certain area, let's say for example, they really thrive in a hardwood forest environment, an area where there's a lot of oaks or maples, then I'm gonna start my search for that, that critter in that spot. I wouldn't start looking in a marsh. Uh, we base, and that's just going to be where you're going to start your nature hike, and that gives us an idea on how to get started. So now we're going to switch gears and focus specifically on the opossum, and I'm going to cover things such as identification, the habitat, so where it likes to live, and a little bit about its reproduction, and then we'll conclude the episode by focusing on how to find signs of the opossum when I'm out there on our nature hike with our class. Now we're gonna learn a little bit about how to identify the Virginia opossum. So the Virginia opossum is a marsupial, and it's the only marsupial that is native to North America. Well, what is a marsupial? Well, a marsupial is a mammal that's pouched, so it's young, actually live in a pouch. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. Uh, what's really neat thing about the opossum, though, is now we can find them all across Vermont. You've probably seen them at night driving down the road. I wouldn't be surprised if you've seen a opossum along the side of a road or even just out, out and about at night. But 150 years ago, you wouldn't have seen an opossum in Vermont. Uh, up until colonization, Virginia opossum was only found as far north as Indiana and Ohio. After colonization, however, the opossum are very highly adaptable and they began to spread across 
uh, their range and increase their range and eventually making their way all the way in to Vermont, where we have them now today. To identify our opossum, we're looking at a few main characteristics. Uh, the first thing we're looking at is going to be its gray body. So as you can see with this opossum pelt that I have in my hands right here, it's got gray fur that runs its entire length of its body. The other thing you're going to note for the image of the opossum that's on the, uh, the screen right now is they have a really distinguished pink nose as well as long whiskers that come off of their, their face right there. We're also looking at black on the edges of their ears as well. The Virginia opossum is a nocturnal animal, meaning that they're active during the nighttime. They're also an extremely aggressive animal. So it's really common for Virginia opossums when they're threatened to, to hiss and screech, but they also also the opposite effect as well. So you might have heard the expression playing dead. So not only are they aggressive when approached, so they'll, they'll hiss and screech and make themselves known, but they also will play dead. So they'll quite literally lay down and pretend that they're dead as a defense mechanism to make them less likely to be eaten by something. Another fun fact about our Virginia opossums are that they are a solitary animal. Uh, meaning that very rarely will we find them together. And if we do, it's going to be female opossums that are traveling together. Male opossums, when they're together, they're going to be fighting. So you'll never see male opossums together unless they're, they're fighting or in a disagreement. The only time you, you see opossums traveling in groups or if they're females. So opossums can be found in a wide range of habitats. Primarily, we're going to be, they're going to be located in areas where it's, it's woody, deciduous, uh, meaning you have oaks, maples, that type of, of a hardwood forest. But they can be found just about all over the place. It's very common to find them as well along uh, farmland and marshes. So the primary factor is having some sort of easy access to water. Uh, so especially where we are right now, we're in a beautiful hardwood forest, and you might not be able to see it on camera, but right off the side, maybe 50 yards to my right, is a beautiful marsh. So this would be a perfect habitat for them. So while many animals out there have specific territories, that's not the case with opossums. So opossums are highly nomadic, meaning that they're wanderers. So they don't have a set territory that, that they're living in. They're going to be moving through one area to another, uh, and that really fits with the fact that they're solitary animals as well. So along those lines, they're not really adept at digging. So an opossum isn't going to dig very well at all. So instead, when it comes to finding a source of shelter, what they're doing is they're looking for old burrows. So they're gonna be looking for something another animal has dug out that is no longer in use. They might uh, use a underside of a stump or anywhere that they can use as a, as a quick burrow or a den. Uh, but they're not gonna be digging out their own dens themselves. So you might be thinking right now, wow, my school is in a really urban environment. There's no way I'm gonna see an opossum. Well, opossums thrive in rural and urban environments, uh, particularly in suburban environments. So while you might find them in the Burlington area, uh, right on the outskirts is where you're gonna see a, a really good abundance of opossum in that kind of mixed habitat, uh, right on the line between urban and, and rural. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention again is I mentioned earlier, or a few seconds ago, uh, that they often use dens of other critters. They might not just use dens though. So they, it's very common to find if there's an abandoned garage or an old house, foundations. They're highly adaptable and will use a wide range of different burrows or dens. Stuff that we might not necessarily think of, of being a den, but if there's a, an abandoned house or something like that, they would certainly use that. Current Virginia opossum populations across Vermont uh, remain stable, and we continue to monitor their populations across the state as they continue to extend their range. Uh, of interesting note is up until recently, you really didn't start to find them in the Northeast Kingdom. Uh, just last year, we received evidence of an opossum right in Newport, and that is evidence of them slowly making their way further uh, across Vermont, and the populations are doing extremely well, and we are just continuing to, to monitor their, uh, their population as well as through sustainable harvesting.
the Virginia opossum breeds sometime between January and July. The female opossum will find an abandoned den or a hollowed out tree and create a nest. Uh, from there, about 12 to 13 days later, she's going to have a litter of anywhere from five to up to 13 young opossums. And they don't have just one litter a year. It's often that they'll have up to two litters per year and they'll have them anywhere between February and July throughout that time period. Uh, so that means that theoretically, one opossum could produce as many as 26 other opossums in just one year. You might be shocked to hear this, but immediately after birth, opossums are only the size of a honeybee. And being that they're, I mean, when I say honeybee, they are so tiny. They weigh approximately a fifth of a gram and they are blind and completely helpless when they're first born. So immediately after being born, they actually crawl into their mother's pouch and immediately begin to nurse. They stay in that pouch for approximately 55 to 60 days nursing. After about 60 days, then they emerge from the pouch and ride on their mother's back for the remainder of the time, for about another 30 to 40 days. After about 95 to 105 days after being born, they are now independent of their mother. And then about six months year of, of, or six months of age, then they become completely mature and they're on their own. Females will mate and raise their first litter uh, approximately the next breeding season after their birth. So it can be even as little as less than a year uh, will it be reproducing again? So now we're to the part of the segment where soon you're going to get to go out on a nature walk with your class and you're going to be focusing on the habitat of the Virginia opossum. Once you've found the correct habitat though, then you have to go and try to look for the sign. And there's two main types of sign that you're going to find when you're out on your walk. The chances of you stumbling across an opossum during the day are very slim because they're nocturnal. But we can still figure out if there's an opossum in that area by looking for two key things. Things. And the first thing I'm going to be looking for is tracks. Uh, so as you might imagine, we have a lot of different critters that are in the woods around me right now. I can't see them at all, but they're leaving evidence, they're leaving signs of their tracks. When I'm looking to try to figure out if a track is an opossum, what I'm doing is I'm focusing on a couple key things. And the first is I'm looking at how that animal's walking. So what is the way that those tracks are lining up next to each other? So when we classify them, we try classify them as walkers and trotters, bounders, hoppers, or waddlers. And an opossum is a waddler, meaning that when it walks, it's really kind of waddling. And they'll have an image right up there on the screen right now where you can see evidence of an actual opossum track and how it kind of has that really nice kind of waddle to it as it's going and it's putting its feet off to the side of itself. Next thing I'm looking at is the tracks themselves. So their hind feet and the front actually look a little bit different. So I'm not going to have two sets of tracks that are completely identical because their rear feet and their front feet look slightly different. So I have to look at that as well. So with their hind foot, the thing that I'm looking at, it almost looks a little bit like our hands. So we're gonna have a back pad. You have four, uh, almost like fingers coming off of it. You have a fourth or a fifth off the side, but on the, with these four on this paw, you're gonna see little claw marks. And it's gonna look like, if you're looking in mud or snow, it's gonna look just like, almost like a little dot that you're seeing as evidence. It's not gonna be this big, obvious little claw that comes off of it. It's gonna be rather small. With their front, it's gonna be very similar. It's just gonna be a little bit smaller. And then one of the, piece, uh, the fingers off the side are gonna be off a little bit, almost directly across from the other one. Again, when we're tracking though, the image is not gonna be perfect. They're not going to go out and leave you this perfect track in the snow. And if they did, you got really lucky. Oftentimes, we'll find a, a half, half of a track or it'll be filled in with snow or mud and we have to focus a little bit on what else is going on. So what are some other evidence that this might be an opossum? Look at what other animals might not be in that area. Look at the habitat and then you can put it all together. 
The other piece of sign that we're going to be looking for is scat. And scat is just a scientific word for poop. So that is exactly right. I am telling you to go out there with your class right now and look for poop. But we're looking for animal scat is what it is. So when you're out there, we're not referring to it as poop. We're referring to it as scat because right now you're acting as biologists for us. You're out there investigating, trying to find evidence of that critter. And all animals out there leave, some, leave scat. And that's a really easy way for us as biologists to find evidence that there was a species in that area. Lucky for all of you, I actually have some opossum scat with me today. So I have some right here. And you see by looking at this right here, it's typically a little stringy on the ends. The scat itself is about half an inch in diameter, usually by about one to two inches long. And it's a little clumped together typically like this. So you have several, several pieces of it all together. Opossum scat can look a little bit like raccoon scat at times. One of the easy ways to differentiate that is actually looking at the color. So raccoon scat is typically more dark in coloration, whereas opossum scat is a little bit lighter in coloration. Uh, oftentimes you'll also be able to see a little bit of what it ate as well, and that's going to impact the shape and the structure of that scat. So now that we have highlighted the Virginia opossum, we've talked about its reproduction cycle, the diet, a little bit about how to find signs of, of the Virginia opossum when you're out there on your hike. Now it's time for you to go out there with your class and actually spend some time looking for signs of the opossum. So you're going to be looking for the tracks that we discussed. You're going to use your track identification cards that you have. You might not find tracks of opossum, but you may find evidence of other critters that are out there as well when you're out on your walks. And a really neat thing that you can do is actually bring a little sketchbook with you and sketch what you find. And then you can come back and actually look up. So if you find a, a track that you're not sure what it is, you can sketch that and look it up later. So enjoy your hikes. Next week we are going to be talking about the Eastern Coyote.